So today, we're going to be learning everything you need to know about reference tracks. If you're not familiar with that concept, it's basically one of the most important tools that mixing and mastering engineers use in their tool belt. And it refers to the act of picking a reference track. It could be, for example, if you're working on an EDM song and you want your EDM song to sound like a specific EDM song, or rather to have the same tonal characteristics, well, you would take that other EDM song and you would put it through what we call a Spectrum Analyzer plugin, which is what I have opened right now. It's called Audio Lens, and it's made by a company called Isotope. And guess what? It's 100% free, so you can go ahead and download it right now. I'll leave a link to that in the description. And what's really cool about this one compared to other Spectrum Analyzer plugins, such as Vox Angle Span, which was po really popular back in the day, is that this is a standalone application. So you don't even need to bring it into your DAW. You can open it from your desktop and you can reference audio from anywhere, from, from streaming platforms, from your, your Finder app, uh, and even from your DAW. So you don't have to like bring, you know, you don't have to download a song from a streaming service or, you know, none of that. So it's very simple. So this is why I use this plugin and I'll show you some other neat features that it has in just a little bit. So getting back to reference tracks, this applies to obviously music production, but it could also apply and actually most definitely applies to film mixing as well. But here's the catch. Like if you want to get a really good result out of reference tracking, you want to analyze not the entire track, but you want to pick specific sections of you know, whatever it is, if it's a film, especially a film, you want to pick, for example, like there's a there's a section in the film, like you're working on a epic car chase or something. Well, you want to find a film that has an epic car chase and just reference that part through audio lens. And we're, I'm going to show you how you can get basically a snapshot of the frequency spectrum. And you can do that. Well, follow that process and apply it to your mix, scan it as well and see, compare both frequency spectrums or snapshots of the frequency spectrum and see where your mix is lacking or where your mix has too much of one thing. And you can really scientifically get to the result that you want to. So it's better than, you know, just kind of like guessing your way there, which, you know, working with audio is probably one of the most complex things the human being can do. So, you know, give your ears a break every now and then. There are things that... Uh, can and can't be done with your ears. So this is one of them. So that being said, I'm not going to be use a streaming platform for copyright purposes. I'm actually going to be demoing this plugin using one of my own tracks. So let's get a, go ahead and load that up. So before hitting capture, I just want to show you guys what this looks like. So if I press play, So as you can see, we get already, it's it's showing us what we're hearing on the on the frequency spectrum. So right off the bat, it's it's instantaneous. It just listens to whatever you're listening to. So that's that's good. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna capture one of these snapshots that I've been talking about since before. And I'm gonna show you what that looks like and what you can do afterwards with that snapshot. So what you do is you click capture. And we're gonna go ahead and play a you know a couple of bars of this track. So I think we got enough of that. So you, you see it pops up over here. Well, let's just click save. And there we go. And I'm actually going to move my uh, self out of the way for a second. So as you can see over here, it's 
gives you a pretty good depiction of, you know, whatever's darker is whatever was more predominant in the frequency spectrum. And, you know, whatever's blurry, you know, is just, you know, obviously to compensate for the movement of, you know, everything. So it gives you a general idea of what your frequency spectrum is for that given section. So if you wanted to create an epic synth wave EDM intro, this is what it should look like in that style, right? So what you can do after this is you can actually start collecting these, you know, it saves them permanently in your audio lens library. And yeah, so you could just have like, it's kind of like collecting Pokemons, you know, you just, you know, got to catch them all. So that's, that's a cool thing you can do with it. But if you're using the isotope ecosystem, what you can do is you can actually import one of these snapshots into Neuron and Neuron can apply that to your mix. So if you, you know, if you're getting into like AI mixing and mastering, that kind of stuff, this could be a really cool way to save yourself some time and to just get like a instantaneous results, right? Well, yes and no, like I still encourage you to actually go ahead and do the work yourself. You can probably help yourself a little bit with tools like this, but you know, chances are, if you just kind of like copy paste this onto one of your tracks, it's not going to give you, you know, it's not going to give you the exact thing that you're looking for. And that's because reference tracking is not necessarily or definitely not 100% about just spectrum analysis. There are other things to take into consideration, like the actual instrumentation, the key, the tempo, you know, like if it's like EDM, there's the, you know, the timbre of the synths, like you can just plop an EQ in there and then it's done, you know, you're going to get the same result. So you have to take all these things into consideration. But like I said, in regards to mixing and mastering specifically, if you've done your homework beforehand and you know your tracks are same genre, same instrumentation, it's, you know, more or less the same thing. And, you know, you just want to like, basically put the cherry on top of the cake. Well, this is definitely an important step in that process. So, all right. So I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And if you have any suggestions or recommendations for future tutorials, feel free to leave those in the comments and we will see you in the next one.